I first heard what Jeff Weiss had done at his high school on the Red Lake Reservation in Minnesota, it hit me hard. Though my thoughts went out to the young native children that he took with him, Alicia White, 14, Thurlene Stillday, 15, Dwayne Lewis Jr., 15, Chanel Rosebear, 15, and Chase Lassier, 15. What struck at my heart, though, was the similarities I shared with this 16-year-old native kid who lived on a reservation across the country from my own. If you're not familiar with the story of Jeff Weiss, don't feel bad. The media spent a total of five minutes on the story. President Bush offered his condolences five days later because it was more convenient to do it on his weekly radio address. On the afternoon of March 21st, 2005, Jeff took a 22 caliber gun to his grandfather's house, Daryl Lassure, 58, who was a tribal police officer. He then shot Daryl and his live-in girlfriend, Michelle Singana, 32, wearing his grandfather's gun belt and bulletproof vest and loaded down with his police-issued pistol and shotgun, Jeff drove his grandfather's squad car to the front door of the Red Lake High School. 28-year-old security guard Derek Brunn, unarmed, confronted Weiss but was quickly gunned down. Jeff entered the school, shooting randomly down the hall. He then entered the first classroom he came to. This is where he would first kill Neva Rogers, 62, a teacher, before turning on the children in the classroom. After a brief shootout with police, Jeff then turned the gun on himself. In the end, 10 people, four adults, six children including Jeff, lay dead with seven other children wounded. People wanted to know, how could this have happened? They looked at Jeff's past attempts at suicide. They also looked at the high dose of antidepressants prescribed to him. Mainly, they looked at how he identified himself and his affinity for wearing all black and dressing goth style. Then it was revealed that Jeff agreed with Adolf Hitler's views of racial purity and that in his extensive online life, he referred to himself as native Nazi. I was floored not because of the idea of a native Nazi, but because at his age I was obsessed with revolutionary leaders, especially Hitler and his views of racial purity. Like Jeff, I held the view that native people are being crossbred out of existence. And like Jeff, I wore a black trench coat, pre-Columbine, was labeled goth, and I would fantasize about killing the bullies that gave me no peace. We even shared the same habit of manifesting these fantasies into violent drawings, using only the color red to fill in the blood and guts. Jeff even created an animated short done in this style. The animation is called Target Practice. Viewer discretion advised for animated violence. So what was the difference between us? And more importantly, was there anything I could have done for a native so like myself? Jeff, like many native kids, came from a broken home with a high dose of alcoholism. Sheltered from his father's home in Red Lake and his mother's home in Minneapolis until the age of eight. This is when his father would commit suicide at his home after a day-long standoff with police. Four months later, his mother would suffer brain damage in an alcohol-related car wreck leaving her in a rest home. From the age of nine, Jeff lived with his grandmother, Shelda Lassure, on the Red Lake Indian Reservation. Jeff came to despise the existence on the reservation, the power of alcohol to turn friends on each other, and the general feeling of hopelessness. Ask any native, the res sucks. Jeff had looked up to his father for being brave enough to take his own life. Jeff Weiss did take the lives of his own people but I believe that he possessed a general care and concern for native people. He had been described by friends as being trustworthy with confessions and always understanding. I believe he had a great empathy. This showed in his concern for the future existence of native people. He cared enough to be angry about it. My name is Keith Rock from the Browning Indian Reservation in Montana, and I'm not here to condone the actions of Jeff Weiss. I'm here to tell you about a kid the world forgot about.
Legion. Legion is the belief that there is a mental underground, a mental underground of people of the darkness. You know who you are. You've always known who you are. And Legion is your family, your unknown family that no one else can see but you. Legion is a collective of loners. <clears throat> Contrary to a popular belief, dressing all in black and listening to devil music doesn't make you crazy or psycho. If anything, it helps you. It keeps you sane. For people like us, this is how we're structured. And this is what we need. And this is what keeps us sane and who we are. You want to drive us crazy, make us be like you. I just want people to realize that there are different mental structures that other people will fall under. Like my own. My own violent drawings, done in blood and guts. It got me my first counseling session. I never once did listen to the counselor. They annoyed the hell out of me. But I kept drawing them. They couldn't stop me from that. But instead of killing people, I just got really good at drawing. I think what kept me around was anger. I was so angry at this world, so angry at what had happened to my people, that, you know, even at the worst of times, I knew that there was no way I was going to leave this world because I was too pissed off. I'm not leaving until I make a difference. Then you can have me. I understand this is a large subject matter. I'm only one person, but if, if that's what it takes, you know, maybe one person to start a different structure for people that are structured different. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to explore and explain everything that needs to be said. So I'll leave you with this. In the year following the incident at Red Lake, I found myself writing poetry to any use I felt needed to hear words like my own. And uh, one of the poems I wrote was for Jeff Weiss. It's called Native Nazi. Little braids like horns, this flesh-born bone leaves sores. Little horn is born. Sworn to the blood and all it implies after being on the front lines of the hidden genocide. Time to turn the tide, take the guise of a genocidal genius. Feels like none of the people can see this, depletion with depletion, seeking the solution. But there are no easy answers for this classroom execution. Born on a plane that is not the same as their mind, I am the weak, the sick, the one left behind. God damn it, I'm sick of their kind. Pieces of shit don't even know what they are. In their little cliques, laughing and smiling with their friends, passing judgment on everything they see. I know they're laughing at me. I am an angel in disguise, sent to either be nurtured or denied. I am an angel that defied, so I was punished with this life. My feathers have not changed. I still blame God for making me this way. That is my nature. The true test was for you to nurture a soul you could see needed structure. For all of your talk of tradition, you never taught acceptance and the benefits of being receptive. Instead, you took my beauty as a commonality of a word you didn't hesitate to call me. Reinforcing old war wounds, you made me legion. Here to bring your ruin and the changing of reason. Trapped in this physical body, I can only see one way to be free. I will change this fucked up world by making sure everyone knows of me. Read the poem.
fade out on his smiling face. Man, there's so much haters on the internet. So many people hating on the internet. <laughs> Fuck you, internet haters! <laughs> All right. I think I can.